If you've ever taken any sort of research class, the professor or librarian probably didn't have a lot of nice things to say about using Google. Google is great for a lot of things, but it can be hit or miss when it comes to academic research. But Google has a specialty page called Google Scholar that totally changes that. Google Scholar pulls in information from many different academic sources and across many different disciplines. It's where I go to search when I really don't know where to start. Be aware that not everything in Google Scholar is a journal article and not everything is peer-reviewed. Some citations are books or patents or case law or even abstracts from conference presentation. It is better than searching just plain Google, but you can still get some pretty random results. Also, it may not have the most recent articles. It can take 6 to 12 months for Google Scholar to index materials. To get to Google Scholar, you can search for it just via Google, but I recommend going through the library's link. This will bring up all of the full text that ISU has access to. This means you are much more likely to find the full PDF article. To find this link, just look for the listing of databases on the library's website. Then either type in Google Scholar or just browse the G's. One of the greatest strengths of Google Scholar is that it's super easy to use. Let's do a search on ways to prevent burnout in nurses so it can demonstrate how easy it is to use. So just type in the words for match the search that you want. In this one, I'm going to do prevention, burnout, and nurses. And Google is very helpful saying, did you mean preventing burnout in nurses? And I guess I could. Prevention or preventing will work. And thankfully, Google is actually pretty good about recognizing synonyms and different spellings. So even though I typed in prevention, if you can see some of the bolded words, you can see it looked up preventative and preventing in addition to. So yay for Google. And by default, Google searches by relevance. That means it's putting the articles that most closely match what you typed in towards the top. You can come over to sort by date in order to change that, but generally I leave it by relevance. One of the things I do change sometime is the custom range. And you can include the last five years or the last year or whatever range of dates that you want. You can totally do a basic Google Scholar search. Just type in some words that best match your topic or the research that you're looking for, and it's probably gonna find stuff. If you want to be fancy, you can run a search with more options. In order to do that, you just click on the arrow here at the end. Now, this is bringing up a box of additional search options. It has the search that I just had, but I'm going to change my search now. And I'm going to try to find articles that talk about how uh, the health literacy of patients impacts their outcome or their health outcomes. So I want health outcomes for sure in all the words. That means I'm telling Google Scholar that I really want anything that mentions the word health or anything that mentions the word outcomes. I don't really care what order those are in. I just want both of those words to appear in the articles. The next line down is exact phrase. This is an amazing and wonderful thing to do. If you've ever searched with quotes, that's the thing that exact phrase is. So again, I want to find information on health literacy, but I want this to appear appear as a phrase. I only want articles where these two words appear together. So I'm going to do health and literacy. If you want, you can get even more detailed. The with at least one of the words, that's looking for synonyms. So that could be in children or youth or adolescence. That is what that would do. Without the words, it's asking Google to not include words. That is okay, but use it with caution because sometimes you can eliminate searches that are actually really helpful. Generally, I don't do that. The where my words occur, I love this because if you want something really specific, you can ask it to only bring up articles or information or other citations where all of these words that you have typed in occur in the title of the article. This is going to really narrow your search because chances are the words you use may or may not be in a title. Sometimes it's a fun place to start because if there is a title that has all of these words, chances are it's a very good match for your topic. Then you can go on if you have a particular author you're looking for or a particular journal that you want that information from, you can put it in there. And you can also limit the date. So let's do 2010 to 2016. Let's see what we find. 
Okay, it only found 119 results for Google Scholar. That's amazingly low. That's because we were so specific. And you can see how this fancy search up here got translated into what Google actually searched on. If you turns out that the all in title thing just over narrowed your search and either you get zero or you only get a few, you can just come in here and just delete that. And if I start looking through some of the articles, especially that top one, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And so now let's talk a little bit more about what we are actually looking at when we're looking at Google Scholar results. As long as you're logged into ISU Libraries Google Scholar, then you are going to be able to see these Find It at ISU links. That means we should have access to these articles and you should be able to get to the PDF or full article if you just click on that link. You're also going to see some PDFs and HTMLs. That just means we have access to other versions as well. All right, now let's look at this top article so we can talk about some of the other things that Google Scholar offers. It is a very simple database to search, but it's actually doing some pretty powerful things in the background to make your search even better. The cited by feature in Google is pretty much my favorite thing ever. If there's an article that it's super relevant to your research, so like this top one is for me, then you might wanna click on the cited by link. This will show you all the articles and sometimes books and other sources that have cited the original article, the one here that's at the top. This is a really great thing not only to find articles that are similar to your topics, but it also can track the development of ideas and concepts by following this path forward over time. So you can continue to click on other cited by features. And this is going to take you closer and closer to present day. Eventually you will reach a point where there won't be any cited by because you are at the current year or the current date. I'm going to go back to the original search page. And if you want to track the article backwards through time, the way when you do cited by you're going forward. And if you want to do it backwards, of course, you look at the reference list. And that is what that particular article has cited. But if you can't get to the PDF, like in this case, it looks like we would be able to. But if you are unable to, what I do is I copy the article I'm interested in, and then I click on this web of science. This is going to show up if you are logged into ISU's version of Google Scholar. It's a separate database. It also does some of the site, same citation tracking that Google Scholar does. The number is always going to be smaller just because it generally just focuses on articles, whereas Google Scholar focuses on books and conference reports and all of that other stuff. This is all of the articles that it found that cited the original one. I can already find that in Google, so that's not super useful. What I do is I go to a new search and then I copy and paste the original article. Now, there it is. I can bring that up. It tells me how many times it's been cited. Again, that's going forwards in time, but it also lists the references that this particular article cited. So these are going to be older information, but sometimes it can be really helpful to expand a search, especially if you're stuck on something. So here's the list of references. Some of these we have access to, so you can get to the PDF and you can just continue expanding your search from there. Not 100% necessary for sure, but it can be helpful. The related articles feature searches for other articles that use similar phrases or terms. This isn't an exact science, but it can lead to interesting results. And again, it can expand your search and help you find other things related to your topic. Google offers different versions of many articles. These are different URLs, which may or may not lead to different sites. Be aware that some of these may be the peer-reviewed final version, but others may be earlier drafts of the article before it entered into the peer review realm. Some of these may be from the journal's website or an author page or an institutional repository. Just keep your critical thinking cap on when looking at the alternate versions. Google Scholar also wants to help you with its citations. Isn't it so friendly? Don't get super excited yet though, because they don't always get it right. There are many different versions and citation styles here. APA is the one I'm the most familiar with and just looking at it, I see already a few errors. So why it's a great start, you still need to know how a citation looks in your particular style 
to make sure that there's no errors. Another cool feature that Google offers is the ability to save articles. This is great when you are in the middle of a search and you don't want to stop and read every single abstract or track down every PDF. You just want to keep searching and building a list of articles that may be relevant. Then when you have time, you can go back and see if they're relevant or not. And you need to be logged into Google to do this. You just click on the save. And then once you are ready to go back and look at the saved articles, you just go to my library and they should all be there. The last feature is the search alerts. So let's say this is a great search. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And this is something that I'm interested in. And I will continue to be interested in the new research that comes out. I can create an alert. This is what my search looks like. I can email it to myself. I can say, hey, I want 10 or 20 results. And then I create the alert. If at some point it's no longer relevant to you, you can come back and delete it. Okay, so that is pretty much everything there is to know about Google Scholar. It's not the fanciest database, but it can be a huge help and it's totally free to search. Students, remember the free part after you graduate. You won't have access to all the full articles that you do now, but don't forget that you can use your public library to request articles via interlibrary loan. This is a wonderful service, especially if you're not affiliated with a university library. If you have any questions on Google Scholar or anything else library related, feel free to contact the library closest to you.